Hi, in this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to take an app and upload it to Apple's App Store. So in this example, I have just a very simple little app that has some text and a few graphics on it. Nothing more complicated than that, because the emphasis of this is to demonstrate how to package up your app and get it submitted through the store. So my app doesn't do anything other than what you see here on the screen. So for our purposes, you can assume that, okay, we've got everything all ready, finished in our app, we've done testing, maybe you've tested it on the simulator, hopefully you've been able to test it on different devices, which is an important thing to do. And now you're ready to actually submit this to the App Store. So let's first start off with the developer's website. They have a ton of information and the step-by-step -step process to follow. I'm logged into the developer website and I've come to the provisioning portal. And when you get to the provisioning portal, I'm going to come down to distribution. And of course, in order for you to be able to see all of this, you do have to have a developer account already set up with Apple. So I'm going to go to the distribution link and it gives you the process to go through for creating your apps and you can upload it to the App Store. There's also a similar process to do ad hoc which is to allow you to take your app and let other people test it on their devices before you upload it to the App Store. So this is also a recommended thing to do is to distribute it on you know several different devices, have people make sure it all works and that you've got all the bugs and errors worked out. So from this prepare app link, what it does is we have a nice uh, link right here to the developer tools or the developer site where we can get the workflow for submitting for the App Store. So I'm going to click on that link and it's going to open up a new tab okay, which goes through the whole process of configuring the app and building and running and testing on the simulator. So this point we're looking at distributing apps. So that's going to be our focus. So I'm going to come down here and click on the link for distributing apps. Okay, and then we have the whole process built in here. And notice that this is for written in Xcode 4.3 and the SDK of 5.0. So for user testing, this goes through the process of setting it up for testing with different team members, how to set up a provisioning profile for user testing, and sending it to other people in order to be able to Get all the bugs out before you're ready to submit to the App Store. So I'm going to scroll down here and come to the part where we're at publishing your app to the App Store. So it says to create a distribution profile. So I'm going to open this up into another tab. Okay, where over here it has the steps outlined and first it says to um, go to the provisioning in the sidebar and click the distribution tab. So I'm going to go back to my provisioning portal and click on provisioning and then I'm going to go to distribution and I have some other provisioning profiles already set up so I'm just going to create one as a little demo so I'll click new profile and this is going to be for the App Store if I was doing this to distribute to other people for testing I could choose ad hoc and so this is my monsters test app so I'm just going to call this profile monsters test so that I remember that this is what it was for and then uh, you select your app ID and then we click submit now it says pending here and so all I have to do is come up and refresh my browser screen and then I have uh, an active distribution profile that I can download so I'm just going to click download and that should be in my downloads folder. Okay, now to install my provisioning profile, I go into my downloads folder and double click. Now in the tools workflow guide, right, it says to come in and set this up. 
and then install the provisioning profile. Just drag the mobile provision file into the library and you can do that. You can also just double click on it on the actual mobile provision file and that should open up the device organizer. So let me open up my downloads folder. Okay, and I'm just going to double click and it comes back into Xcode and it opens up my organizer and then I have my monsters test profile and it is listed as a valid profile. Okay, so now that I have that part taken care of, let me go back to the instructions. Okay, so the next step, right, we've created a provisioning profile and now the process for submitting the app to the App Store. Right, first you must be registered in iTunes Connect. So I'm going to go to my iTunes Connect and I can click this. I've already done that, so I have my window open here. So I'm going to put in my ID and my password and sign in. And if you haven't gotten an iTunes Connect account set up yet, you can do that. Okay, so I've logged into my iTunes Connect account. But before I continue in here, and this is the place to manage everything about your apps that you have posted up. Um, before I go in to manage my account in order to add, I have to go back and prepare my app. So again, back here in the steps, I've got my iTunes account set up and now I need to prepare it to submit for the App Store. So I need to create an archive. Again, what's nice is they have links here to the steps. So we have the steps for archiving the application. So I'm going to switch back to Xcode and I need to create a new scheme in order to be able to create an archive. So I'm going to come back here and up here where we have our scheme, this is for testing purposes. I'm going to create a new scheme and I'm going to say Monsters Archive. And then I'm going to edit that scheme. So I'm going to choose Edit Scheme. And I'm going to choose the Archive option. I'm going to make sure its build configuration is for release. And if I leave this checked off, that means that after the archive is created, it's going to open up the organizer and show me the archive in there. So I'm going to click OK. And then we come up here to Product and choose Archive. Right, and it goes through the process up here of generating the archive. Okay, so it pops open the organizer and then I have my archive listed in here. Now before we can prepare this and distribute it to the App Store, I have to validate it first. So it's going to go through and check and make sure everything is set up properly. So I'm going to validate it. And it goes through a bunch of verifications and it has no suitable applications records were found. Make sure that you have set up a record for this application on iTunes Connect. So in other words, I haven't set up anything for this app on iTunes Connect yet, so it's not recognizing it. So I'll click OK and I'm just going to cancel. And I'm going to switch back to my browser and go into iTunes Connect. So I'm going to start as if I'm creating a new application to upload. So I'm going to choose Manage Your Applications and I already have one that's in and waiting. So I'm going to choose Add New App and fill in the information for the language, the app name, a SKU number. This is something that you can make up and if you have questions as you go along you can um, hit any of these to get a pop-up window. And my bundle ID was set up when I created my developer account and my bundle suffix or my bundle ID suffix right when you upload your binary it's going to be looking for this ID and that's what it couldn't match with iTunes when I was trying to generate the archive so I'm going to switch back to Xcode and show you where to find your bundle ID I'm going to click over here in the files section I'm going to click right on my project name and this is my bundle ID so we can copy this and then I'm going to go back to 
iTunes Connect and put in my bundle ID and it didn't copy that whole thing so I'm gonna put that in and then I'm gonna click continue so the app name has already been used so you have to get a little clever with what you're going to call your app name so I'm just gonna put like a little asterisk in here and see if it'll accept that okay and then we have when it's available we choose our pricing and you can go into get more detail about the different tiers uh, since this is free I don't even need to make that for educational institutions so I'm going to click continue and then we have some information to fill in here so I'm going to have version number one and copyright category let's just say games not really anything I'm going to be taking this down after it's been submitted so I'm just gonna scroll down here we have rating details so if you wanted to get more information about these ratings you can but I'm just going to say that it doesn't have any of these but you should double check to make sure that if yours match any you choose appropriately uh, description so just popped in a real quick description and keywords you want to put in an email address and a support URL then you need a large app icon right and um, it gives you the dimensions and in other words you can't take a small icon maybe you developed an icon for a regular display and a retina display you can't just take that and scale it up it gets all pixelated um, and also don't round the corners and it should be um, flat in other words not multi-layered so I'm just going to choose a file that I had for a different app because I don't feel like creating something different just for this demo All right so here's my large app icon screenshots now to get screenshots you can do that through running an app on your device and capturing screenshots and you do that by pressing the home and the power button at the same time and it'll grab a screenshot from whatever you have on your screen you can also do that through Xcode and the organizer let me just quickly show you how to do that I'm going to switch back to the organ or to Xcode and you can quickly jump to the organizer by clicking on the icon at the end Okay, back in the organizer I'm selecting the device that I have my app running on and I'm going to come over to select screenshots and these are some previous screenshots that I have and so now I'm going to delete these I don't need them anymore so I've gotten them off and to create a new screenshot I'm going to come in the bottom right corner of my screen and choose new screenshot and right away it grabs a copy of the screen that I have my app running on on my device and so if I wanted another screenshot then I would change something on my screen so now I've changed my screen on my device and now if I grab a new screenshot you'll see that this is what's on my phone right now so if you have more than one screen in your application and you want to share it with the users before they download or buy your app then you can take several different shots of different screens to give them an idea of what they're what they're buying so I don't want this screenshot so I'm going to delete that and I believe you have to have a minimum of one screenshot for your app so I'm going to keep this one and in order to be able to pull it into iTunes Connect I need to save it so I'm going to export this and just put it on my desktop so now let's go back into iTunes Connect and I'm going to choose a file from my screenshot and I put that on my desktop so I'm going to grab that right and if I had this also for iPad then I could choose the iPad screenshots so I'm going to click Save okay so it brings me back to this screen and I'm going to choose done and then this will keep a listing of the apps that we have uploaded so I'm going to go back into my monster mash and I'm going to choose view details and now I'm ready to upload the binary and mine does not have any cryptography so I'm just going to choose no and save 
says you're now ready to upload your binary using the application loader. So I'm going to click continue. And that little ding you heard was my email from iTunes saying that, uh, that this app is now waiting for upload. So now I'm going to go back to my organizer and try coming back and uh, validating it again. So I left, this was left open from before. So let me try validating again. Okay, so I was able to get through to get it to validate, but now I have some errors in here that I have to correct before I can continue. So one is the icon, right? I don't have any icons in there and um, failed code sign verification. So let me cancel back out of this and I'm going to go back to my Xcode project and I don't have any icons and I also didn't put in a default PNG file so I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to open some files. I have my icon files right that I'm going to drag in to my project and say copy in and finish and so let's just drag these in and then I'm going to add in my default okay so uh, let's go back into the organizer again revalidate okay and I'm still getting this icon error so I'm going to it says provide a default icon and this says with a capital I so I'm wondering if I know that it's case sensitive and mine is a little I so I'm going to delete this right and now this disappears and I'm going to rename this to a capital I okay, and then I'm going to drag it in again now this time it automatically picked that up so back to the organizer let me get to validate again and it's still not validating when this happens what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to archive it again so that it updates with the changes that I have right so we have failed validation and so here's the new one and so I'm going to try validating this again okay so even after making several changes back in the project it doesn't automatically update back into your your archive now I'm still getting an error here code sign verification signature was invalid or not signed with an iPhone distribution certificate. So let me cancel out of this. And I'm going to delete these archives since we know that when we make a change in our project, we have to come back in and update it. So the problem was with the code sign. So I'm going to check to see what it's set for. So now I'm going to switch to the project information here. And I'm going to check to see what my release is set for now. Uh, the release code signing identity is set for my developer account, but I could come in and check. I want to make sure that it's for the pinch tap zoom, and then I'm going to re-archive it. And I'm going to go through the validation again. And this time I'm going to be sure to change or check the code signing identity here since I could have multiple different ones and it looks like it's going to the wrong code signing certificate. So I'm going to make sure I select the right code signing certificate and click next. And now we have no issues. So now I can click finish and then I can come up for distribute. I'll choose submit to the iOS app store and again login information. Looks like it's working. Okay, and then a successful screen, no issues found, it's passed validation, it's been submitted to the App Store for further review. So I'll click Finish. This shows as submitted. And let's go to the iTunes. We'll go to the Summary. And it says Uploaded, Receive. And so then I wait to hear back from Apple whether it's been accepted into the App Store. So I'll click Done and then I can see my submission here and it's waiting for approval. So those are some of the steps in preparing your app for submission and submitting it to the App Store. And I intentionally had a couple of, of the common errors that you run into when you're trying to submit just so that uh, might help you with some troubleshooting.
Hope you find it useful.